funds. Welcome now, Douglas Holtz Eakin. He's American Action Forum, president and former head of the CBO. Doug, thanks so much for being here. You wrote a piece sure. on this very subject. And I guess let me start with the question of if you just want to make money off your investment, are you better off with ESG or without it, or should somebody else be deciding? Well, I certainly think investors should be deciding whether this is, you know, uh, material information about the financial future of the investments they want to make. And you can imagine situations where it might very well be material for a very long-lived, uh, you know, uh, clean energy investment, something like that. Sure, environmental information might be valuable, but it should be decided on that basis, and we should be providing investors with the information they need to make their decisions. That's always been the most effective way to run a, a capital market and other, and other markets. So I'm a little perplexed about this. On the one hand, I thought that these funds really had some certain fiduciary duties, and if they're complying with fiduciary duties, and they're doing their job. On the other hand, I do understand that a given state, take Florida, take Texas, could say, look, for our money, we don't want to invest it that way. Is there anything wrong with that? So I, the reason I wrote the piece is I was trying to sort through all these issues. So if you look at it from the perspective of a, of a state, you know, those elected officials are there to do the wishes of their voters. And if they don't want to touch uh, ESG in their investment portfolios, that there's nothing wrong with that. Right? They, they can be respectful of that. They might want to be mindful of the fact that they're passing up additional potential bidders on contracts, and so they might be paying more for services than they would otherwise. You know, it, it might not be free, but they're certainly, you know, able to do that. For, as for the firms themselves, you know, if it's your money and you're investing, you get to decide. If it's someone else's money that you're investing, well, you have a fiduciary responsibility to get the highest rate of return. And so if you see me as a, as a money manager investing in some ESG stocks, I think that probably must mean I think those have the best fi uh, financial future because that's my job. And uh, be clear about the roles people are, are, are playing. That's the most important thing. Well, I, I'm curious uh, the, just about kind of this idea of setting sort of these uh, guardrails, if you will, in terms of making these decisions for what these funds can or cannot invest in. I understand broad strokes saying, okay, you know, we want to sort of be in this area and not in that area because of some sort of uh, additional risk that might be put on uh, to these funds. But when you get into sort of the granularity of some of these ESG issues, what is the benefit? I, I'm confused by this. I'll be honest. I, you know, I understand, um, you know, providing standardized information. So if there's something out there on the environmental front that you can provide that gives you the ability to compare across companies or across sectors in a in an effective way, that's valuable information. You, want to, you know, you can you can provide that. But dictating what can be the composition of the portfolio to me is is a step over the line. Um, it used to be the case that conservatives, especially, were mindful that they might not agree with other private sector participants, but it's the private sector and they get to make up their mind about what they want. What we see now is an increasingly interventionist uh, right-wing conservative uh, uh, block that wants to use the power of the state to tell people what they can do. And that just doesn't feel good. When do you, do you see that sort of arresting itself at some point? Because it does seem to go against the ethos of what we've seen from the right and the Republican Party for decades now. And I know that there are sort of forces now that have taken over this party that maybe uh, don't dovetail with history. But I do wonder if that runs its course. Well, one would expect it to run its course on financial grounds because the private sector is better positioned to make smart investments. And if it turns out you know, all these things that the governor has told us we could do and the, the federal government told us we couldn't do didn't get us a decent retirement, then, then the, that's, that's really a route to let, let's get, get them out of this business. But also I think it's just the, that, that part of the, the block, that part of the conservative movement's reasserting itself. The, the notion that this country is uniquely dedicated to freedoms and that includes economic freedoms. And we ought to keep the government out of those decisions. Doug, is it a fair question to ask who is the investor for this purpose? Because there's been a lot of focus, for yeah. example, on Larry Fink at, at BlackRock saying, well, that's what you like, Larry, but what about the people who invest in these ETFs? You saw BlackRock now is proposing the possibility of people who invest in the ETFs, they get to vote, actually, on some of the shareholder initiatives. Does that make sense so that I, as a direct investor, get to decide whether I like ESG investing or not? I, I think that if I want to forego some return because I have uh, an environmental goal, that, that is my right. That's my money, it's my investment, and I can, if well-informed, make that decision. And if BlackRock wants my business, they better provide me with that opportunity, right? A, a fund that doesn't and one that does not uh, touch ESG investments is a, is a perfect business strategy. BlackRock shouldn't make the decision for me, though. It should be the investor. That's the key. 
Doug, let me come back to my first question. Do we have any sense yet, or is it too early to know what people may be lay, leaving on the table either way? by taking into account ESG or not taking into account. There were some estimates you've seen that maybe $700 million, I saw one estimate right. came out, that the states may forego by really restricting ESG. Do we have any sense of really what it's going to cost? We don't have a great sense. I think that's a, a, an illuminating figure. You restrict competition for a, a state contract, you, you end up getting less of a good deal. And that, that's where that $700 million comes from. You know, we have seen the state of Florida uh, take its contract away from from BlackRock. What do they get uh, with the alternative? We don't know. But but I think you serve the taxpayers' financial interests best by having vigorous competition for for bids on state services. That's always been the the route, and and this restricts that to some extent, and it will cost you something. Do voters understand? And by voters, I mean the actual uh, people who are the beneficiaries of these uh, pension plans. Do they understand? Uh, the difference in returns, or I guess the potential, I should say, difference in returns. So if they get a less of a return, are they going to make that connection, Doug, to uh, some of the political decisions that were made, or is it just all a wash? I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's going to uh, be obvious to them what went on, but I think this is why we've drafted these positions with fiduciary responsibility, so that they are not allowed to have their personal taste, their personal political desires, their personal social goals, interfere with their investing job and that w that insulates the taxpayer from uh, that kind of an influence and that means they don't have to know that right? you just give them a single objective okay Doug thank you so much for being back with us